We investigate cases of the paranormal. They start in the realm of the unknown and end in the black vault. Precognition is defined as the ability to peer into the future through paranormal means. Throughout history, there have been numerous mysterious sightings that accurately predicted future events. But is precognition a gift to mankind or a curse? Today's story concerns a young man with a tragic past, a terrifying encounter with the unknown, and a brief look into the future. Let's open the black vault and investigate. Roanoke, Virginia, 1967. The funeral of Alan Willis was a tragedy for everyone who knew and loved him, but more so for the wife and the son he left behind. Jenny, 38, was numb, not knowing how to feel. She had loved Alan, but being a traveling salesman, he was always on the road, barely around for the last five years, leaving Jenny to raise Patrick, age 13, practically alone. Alan died in a car accident. He was drunk and fell asleep at the wheel. His car crashed into a telephone pole, killing him instantly. Jenny had half expected this to happen eventually, driving as much as he did. Nevertheless, it was still a shock, and the timing couldn't have been worse, with Patrick still a child and the bills piling up. The funeral was confusing for Patrick. It was true he didn't get an opportunity to grow close to his father, but he was also too young to understand death and all the questions that surround it. Patrick couldn't comprehend what it meant to die, the finality of mortality, and what happens next. The priest had lots to say during his eulogy concerning the great reward that awaited good men like Alan after death, but it was of very little comfort. Patrick wondered why bad things happened to good people, and if one could ever stop those bad things from happening. He sat quietly throughout the mass, a little boy on the edge of an existential crisis. Following the funeral, Jenny and Patrick drove back to their home in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. They didn't speak. Jenny stared out at the darkened road, emotionless. Patrick sat in the back seat, staring out the window. The night was dark, made even darker by miles of dense forest. As the car traveled down the winding mountain road, something strange caught Patrick's eye. He squinted, focusing his gaze on a floating light. He thought it was the full moon at first, but the light was red, and it was moving through the trees, matching the speed of the car. Patrick blinked, trying to get a handle on what he was seeing. A glowing red light, like a ball of fire, shooting through the dark treetops at incredible speed. He watched as the light grew closer. It gained altitude and quickly moved over the road, casting a winged shadow down on the vehicle. Patrick craned his neck, attempting to get a better look. The car's power switched off. The engine sputtered with a choking sound, then went silent. Confused, Jenny gripped the steering wheel tightly as the vehicle slowed to a stop in the middle of the dark road. She turned the ignition. The engine didn't respond. The car was mysteriously dead and the night grew quiet. No wind, no crickets, just an eerie silence. A loud hiss of static emerged from the car radio. A haunting voice echoed out from the speakers. A panicked male voice spilled out of the staticky noise, screaming. It was difficult to make out what was being said clearly, except for the word Mayday and the numbers 4182. Jenny glanced up. A shadowy figure stood on the road. 
It was tall. How tall, she couldn't be sure. But it was very tall, with long wings sweeping down its back and glowing red eyes. Patrick peeked over the passenger seat. It was real because they were both looking at it, and it was looking at them. It flew toward the car and over it. Both Jenny and Patrick quickly spun around, peering out the back window. The mysterious creature had vanished into the night sky. Mother and son sat motionless, quietly processing what they had just witnessed. The car sprang to life, engine rumbling, lights illuminating the country road ahead. Jenny composed herself before grabbing the steering wheel and pressing gently on the accelerator. She didn't talk to Patrick about what they had just experienced. No words were exchanged on the ride home. But the boy's mind was racing. The image of the glowing red eyes forever burned into his memory. Thirty years passed. Patrick was grown and now living in Evansville, Tennessee. He worked as a sales representative for a surgical supplies company and had a pregnant wife, 32-year-old Melanie. Like his father, his job kept him on the road almost 300 days out of the year. Life hadn't been easy for Patrick. After his father's death, his mother had become cold and distant, leaving him to navigate the world on his own. He had made many mistakes and was on the road to making many more, again following in his father's footsteps. July 3rd, 1997. Patrick never had a peaceful night's sleep, not because of the lumpy, uncomfortable motel beds, but because of a persistent nightmare he would have. A nightmare of a winged creature that appeared to him and his mother so many years ago. The nightmare was always the same. He's at his father's funeral. The church is empty, except for the coffin and a crow perched atop it. He inches closer and sees himself lying inside. Arms reach out, pulling him screaming into the coffin. Patrick suddenly finds himself alone in the dark woods. He runs, bolting through the tangle of branches. Patrick looks up. The creature with the glowing red eyes hovers above him. The forest around him bursts into flames. Patrick howls in agony as he burns. He was awoken by the sound of a phone ringing. It was Melanie. She was calling from the hospital. The baby wasn't supposed to be due for another couple of weeks, but Melanie went into labor. His wife would never forgive him for missing the birth of their first child, so Patrick was in a race against time to get home. The fastest way was to fly out of Jaeger Airport in West Virginia. He sped through the dense mountains, praying he would get home in time. Being that it was 4th of July weekend, Flights were fully booked, even in the middle of the night. As luck would have it, the airline was able to find Patrick a single seat on a flight that was just about to take off. Flight 4182. He froze as he was handed the ticket. 4182. The flight number ricocheted inside his head like a stray bullet. Taking his seat, Patrick could feel the blood in his veins grow icy. He wasn't a superstitious man, even with the bizarre encounter that had haunted him since childhood, but he was engulfed by fear. The sheer coincidence of it, that haunting distress call, the horror in the man's voice as he screamed out those numbers. Four, one, eight, two. What could it mean? Then he pictured Melanie at the hospital, 
holding their son and wondering where he was. Patrick disembarked the plane just before takeoff. He would probably be late now, but driving didn't feel like cold water poured down his spine. As Patrick drove, a feeling of embarrassment came over him. Had he overreacted, Patrick thought? Coincidences happen all the time, and maybe this was just another one. A bizarre coincidence for sure, but worthy of running the risk of missing the birth of his first child? The echo of a distant roar and a flash of light appeared in the sky. Patrick pulled over and stopped the car. There was a fiery trail across the sky and arcing downward. The blazing aftermath of a jetliner exploding as it hit cruising altitude. Patrick could only watch as glowing pieces of metal fell from the sky. Flaming debris from flight 4182. Patrick made it to the hospital in time to see the birth of his baby boy. They named him Matthew. Patrick never told Melanie that he had almost been on flight 4182, or why he chose not to fly that day. Only that he felt very lucky that his son won't know the pain of growing up without a father like he did. He would make sure of that. A glimpse of the future could mean luck or misfortune depending on the message and who receives it. For Patrick, it meant breaking a cycle of tragedy and an opportunity to travel down a better path. Join me next time for another mysterious case of the paranormal that emerged from the depths of the unknown and currently resides in the Black Vault.